Hello and welcome to the Collaborative Research Center for American Indian Health's web training on conducting a literature review and explanation of the uses, methods, and resources. My name is Katie Burgess and I have a master's degree in public health with concentration in epidemiology and I am a member of the Collaborative Research Center for American Indian Health's Methodology Corps. Today I will be leading you through an explanation of the purpose behind conducting a literature review, a discussion on the methods behind conducting a literature review, and I will provide you with online resources that include tips, tricks, and tools to help you as you conduct your literature review. There are many different definitions of what a literature review is, however the basic definition is a discussion of a published information in a particular subject area and sometimes within a certain time period. A literature review can be just a simple summary of the sources, but it usually has an organizational pattern and combines both summary and synthesis. A summary is an explanation of current knowledge and key points within the subject area, allowing a detailed look at gaps within the knowledge. This leads then to the synthesizing of the current knowledge with future directions. How might future research contribute to the limitations in knowledge? A literature review might provide new interpretations of old material or combine new with old interpretations. Or it might outline the progression of research in the subject area, including major debates or areas of inconsistencies. Depending on the use or need, a literature review might also include an evaluation of the references in the field. So why do we write literature reviews? We have discussed what a literature review is, but why would you actually conduct a review? Well, there are several reasons. Perhaps you wish to ensure you have a thorough understanding of the topic. For example, you may wish to answer questions such as, why study the topic? What is so important about the topic? Or what are the functions of the topic? You may also seek to identify what has already been done on the topic. You want to answer questions on what is already known, what are key findings on the topic, or what have other researchers done to investigate the topic. You may also perform a literature review to compare existing findings in the topic area. In this case, you would want to know what types of studies have been done and the limitations and strengths of each. All of these lead to you being able to identify areas for future research, such as gaps in the current literature and how future work contribute to the current knowledge. There are certain steps or methods to take when conducting a literature review. These steps include defining your research question, identifying the literature you will review, analyzing the literature, summarizing the literature, and synthesizing the literature. We will discuss each of these steps in detail and provide you with examples along the way. The first step is defining your research question. This is very important as it will be the basis of your search criteria. How broad or narrow your research question is can influence the amount and relevancy of your search results. It is necessary to strike a balance in how broad or narrow your research question will be. If your question is too broad, for example, what is the prevalence of pneumonia, your search results will include a high number of articles that will most likely include a lot of irrelevant studies. However, if your question is very narrow, for example, what strategies have been utilized in the United States to reduce hospital length of stay for patients with pneumonia, then your search results will return relevant articles, but a very low amount of results. This is why you want to tailor your research question so that your search results will give you a high amount of relevant articles. It should be narrow, but not so much that you may miss relevant work. For example, what costs are associated with hospitalizations for pneumonia? Once you have your research question of interest, the second step is to identify the type of literature that you would like to review. For published articles, resources such as PubMed, Web of Science, Google Scholar, and Co Cochrane Reviews are good options. PubMed is a free resource developed and maintained by the National Center for Biotechnology Information at the National Library of Medicine. It provides free access to Medline, the National Library of Medicine's database of citations and abstracts in the fields of medicine, nursing, dentistry, veterinary medicine, healthcare systems, and preclinical sciences. Web of Science is another citation indexing service like PubMed that covers a more general science field with over 256 disciplines including science, social science, arts, and humanities. Google Scholar allows you to search online for digital or physical copies of articles, texts, essays, etc. 
and Cochrane Reviews is part of the Cochrane Library, a collection of databases in medicine and other healthcare specialties. Cochrane Reviews is specifically a collection of systematic reviews and meta-analyses which summarize the results of medical research. It is important to always check the relevance of your published references. You can do this by checking the journal impact factor, a measure of how often articles in a journal are cited, and whether the journal is peer-reviewed. This information is accessible on the journal's website, and certain resources such as Web of Science and Google Scholar can check the number of times an article is cited and by whom. Another option outside of published literature is unpublished gray literature. Gray literature is information found through government websites, conference abstracts, and government agency reports. For example, reports or statistics available on your State Health Department's webpage. This information is not necessarily published in a peer-reviewed journal, but it is a validated source of information that may provide more specific information related to your topic or area and should be considered as an acceptable resource to review. Once you have decided what types of literature you wish to review, the third step is to analyze the literature. This is when you perform your search and review of articles. It is important to maintain an organized method to your analysis. Group articles into categories or themes that emerge as you perform your search. Take good notes. Literature reviews can take time, and so it is important that if you come back to your review that you can pick up where you left off. This means that you should define key terms, note key statistics, strengths, and limitations of published studies. All of these help you to identify major trends or patterns and identify gaps. Your notes and record of your search also help you maintain relevancy to your topic and evaluate references for currency and coverage. The fourth step is to summarize your findings. To do this, you can use tools such as tables or concept maps. When I make a table, I like to use Microsoft Excel, where I can assign different sheets to different themes that I observed in my review. On each sheet, I list key identifying information of the study, such as author, title, journal, and year of publication. I then summarize the reference by collecting information on the type of study design, the sample population enrolled, and key findings or results. I also find it helpful to make columns for strengths and limitations. Another option is the use of a concept map where your research question is a central concept with themes branching off and connecting to current literature associated with each theme. These are just some examples of methods that could be used. The key is to find a way for you to collectively summarize the literature you have collected in a meaningful way so that you can then use this information for the next step. Once you have summarized the literature, you are ready to move on to the fifth step, synthesizing the literature. This is when you take your summary notes and provide an informative write-up that clearly defines and informs your research question from the current literature. I recommend developing an outline from your summary notes. You need to consider your purpose in performing the literature review, then create a topic outline that traces your topic or argument. You then can reorganize your notes to follow the path of your outline. Make sure that within each topic or theme, you note key differences in the studies that you found. Be sure to look for obvious gaps or areas needing more research. Describe relevant findings and discuss how these findings and studies relate to and advance your topic area. You then present conclusions and impl implications for future research. Once you have these things mapped out, you can go back and add in details and supporting evidence from your literature review. As you start conducting literature reviews, you will find your own tools and methods that work best for you when performing your search and summarizing and synthesizing your results. While I won't be going through examples of conducting a search within the different resources mentioned in this presentation, I did want to share with you the multitude of resources available for free online that will provide you with examples of tips and tricks. Most universities and libraries provide free resources available to everyone. Here is just a list of several useful sites, including the National Institutes of Health tutorial on conducting a search within PubMed, and links to handouts and tutorials at the University of Colorado Denver, University of Minnesota, and University of South Dakota. These are just several of many resources available to you online. I hope this presentation helped explain what a literature review is and why you would choose to conduct a literature review. Please be sure to check out the resources provided to further your knowledge of search resources available to conducting a literature review.
Thank you so much for watching and please be sure to check back at www.kirka.org for more presentations and tools.